Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I did something very interesting the other day and I thought that I would document it and share my experience with some of you guys. Last Friday, I spent my morning at an animal shelter for a community service project that I had to do for one of my classes. I vlogged a little bit of it here and there to bring you this video because I'm sure most of you watching are animal lovers just like I am. That's probably why you clicked on this video. And maybe you would like to learn a little bit more um, about how to save our furry little friends and help them find permanent homes. One of my class requirements is to fulfill five community service hours by the end of the quarter. So myself and four of my classmates all decided that we would complete those hours at our local animal shelter. So we spent the majority of the morning cleaning up the quarantine area. We had to sweep up and and clean up the animal feces and um, we had to change the water bowls, we had to wash them, we had to mop the entire room, things like that. The quarantine area is where they keep the new rescues. The quarantine area is basically um, a room with around seven to eight like cell looking cages so these dogs look like they're in an actual prison. And they keep the new rescues separated from each other for the first couple of weeks, maybe even a month, which I assume is because they wanna make sure that they're all fully vaccinated, that they're okay. But there's also the fact that most of the rescues that do come in have been abused and um, might be too nervous to be around other dogs, to socialize with other dogs. But during my time spent at the shelter, I got to meet five little angels, Oreo, Spike, Scooby, Wink, and Hope. Each of these dogs have a story that I'll get into, but let's start with Wink. So Wink was the first dog that we had encountered, but um, we didn't really get to spend much time with her or get to know her because she was taken out of the room like immediately once we got there. I'm not sure why, but she is listed on the shelter's website. So let's read her bio and maybe one of you guys watching might want to adopt her or know someone that might want to. Miss Wink is a nine month old chi weenie with the cutest face. With one eye, her name fits her and she does not let it stop her for a minute. She's super sweet and loves to kiss everyone she meets. Wink loves dogs and people and most of all her toys. She would be the perfect dog for a family with kids as she is always ready to play and gives hugs to everyone along the way. She seems like an absolute angel. I'm a little bit sad that I didn't get to know her very well, but it's okay because I got to know four other dogs pretty well. <laughs> so the next dog that I met was Oreo and we spent a lot of time with him because he had the most energy of all of them and he was begging to be played with. So I'm not too sure on the story of Oreo and how he ended up in the shelter, but the good news is he seems like a very, very happy boy. He doesn't seem to have been abused or mistreated. My guess is he's anywhere between the ages of one and a half to three years old. He knows how to sit on command, but he struggles with the command and stay because every time someone walks in the room he is just overjoyed literally he's just the happiest dog if you step into the cage where he's in right now he just jumps on you and he just wants to be played with and hugged and, and pet petted pet I don't know. <laughs> Point is, all he wants is love and he's a very sweet boy and if I had room in my home I would adopt him on the spot because he is an angel and I'm sure he'll find a good home soon but um, if you're interested hit up the shelter right now, call 1-800. I don't know the number, but I'll, I'll leave it right here. <laughs> the next dog that I met was very standoffish and his name is Spike. You could tell that he was a very nervous and anxious dog and that he had been through a very traumatic um, experience in the past. When we opened his cage, he was too scared to come out, but after giving him some space, he kind of warmed up to the idea of being around humans. One of the girls at the shelter mentioned that he was very weird about people touching his head because he had been abused by someone hitting him over the head. Once he got to warm up to me, I sat on the floor for a little bit and he came closer to me and I started petting him. He was very, he was still very, very scared, but I did notice that there was a big gash on his head. He was open enough to let me pet him, but every time I like reached to pet him, I'd put my hand above him and, and once I landed, he'd go, It's very sad to see to see dogs like that. Scooby was the next dog that I got to sit with for a while and he was sort of the same, but he was worse than Spike because he was the only dog that I wasn't able to get to come out of his shell. He was so scared. He was literally trembling every single second that I saw him. You could tell that he was a little bit more comfortable when 
the door to his like little cage was shut. Um, so he likes to be alone. But of course, you know, every dog needs a home. I know from personal experience that that dogs that have been through a traumatic past can recover from that and still have a very happy life. And over time, they will get rid of those very uh, like scared, nervous tendencies. They'll start having more normal behavior. So later that day, we got to meet some of the rescues that were already out of quarantine. They were outside in a separate little fenced area. And that was when I met Hope. <laughs> this story gets me just so angry at people because like how like it's so it's sick how can people think that this is okay how can people do this to get side cash whatever the case may be how can you do that to an animal so the point is if you are easily upset by or triggered by dog fighting this is just a warning i'm of course not going to show any clips i wouldn't do that but unfortunately, Hope's story does stem from dogfighting, so I just wanted to throw that out there. But I took some clips of Hope while I met her, and um, if you look closely at her body, she has some obvious bites and scratches. And they think that Hope was a victim of what is called dog baiting. To give you a more exact definition of what that means, it basically is the setting of game dogs against a chained or confined animal as a blood sport. The dogs bite and tear to subdue the opposing animal by incapacitating or killing it. It is illegal in most countries with varying levels of enforcement. It's a very terrible thing that happens and it still happens to the stay don't think for a second that just because it's illegal in some countries that it doesn't still happen on the low because it does and it's sick that dogs and, and animals of all types have to experience abuse have to experience brutal murder for no reason and so many dogs like oreo like spike like scooby like wink and like hope they don't deserve that and they deserve a permanent home. And that's why it's so important to adopt and not shop. And if that wasn't compelling enough, I have my own story of my own. One of my first pets ever was um, adopted from a shelter. Her name was Ginger and I got her when I was in kindergarten. When we first picked her up at the shelter, she was an absolute mess i'm telling you she was so scared on the way back home from the shelter to our house that she pit she was sorry excuse me she peed all over um the back seat just completely just it was it was not good let me tell you that she was very scared of everything around her loud noises fast movements if you got too close, she'd get very scared. She was very, very timid, very shy. And when we got her, we had found out that she was found in a dumpster and she had been abused. So abused and abandoned and just all alone and scared and so in need of a second chance at life, at a better life, because that no one deserves that life. Just like you and I, humans don't deserve that life. Animals don't deserve that life. And the amazing thing about Ginger is that she was with me from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade to my senior year. She passed away after I graduated, a little bit after I graduated. Um, so she was with me for the majority of my, my, my time in school. And the truth of it all is that dogs and animal shelters are not bad. They're not, they're not any less of a good companion as one that you would find in Petco or PetSmart or whatever. I just, I wanted to share that knowledge with you and maybe you got something out of it. I don't know. One thing that I wanted to do more in 2019 was give more, whether that be to people in need or to the community, to the environment. I just want to give. I want to give my time, give my love, give my efforts, just give my all to everyone and to myself and to whoever needs it. So I think I did that on Friday. I'm very proud of that. And it's very, very, very easy to volunteer at an animal shelter. Just um, if you're interested, go ahead and look at your local animal shelters website and there should usually be a section about volunteering and they always need the help the animals always need people to play with i hope that you liked this video i hope you got something from it if you liked it give it a thumbs up um ring the little bell so you get notified every single time i upload hit that subscribe button if you love animals hit that like and subscribe button if you love animals that's not a guilt trip it's just the truth i guess i'll i'll leave you with that and uh i'll go i'll go eat my dinner yeah, it sounds like a plan. All right. As always, I love you guys very much, and I will see you on the next one.
Bye.